The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Thursday morning. We got one more trading day in the month today. Tomorrow, two trading days, actually, as we got the trading day beginning in 24 minutes. But coming into the end of June now, markets, folks. Half day on Monday, we will be closed on Monday for the holiday, July 4th. July 4th taking place on Tuesday. We'll see you back here live Wednesday. We got Friday to go as well, but keep in mind, that's going to be the consensus of many. As in Monday, half day in the markets, Tuesday, July 4th, a lot of people taking four day weekends, man, as we come into the end of the month on Friday. Tomorrow, we got markets picking things up in positive territory. But we just got to sell off about 20 points on the S&P on that 830 number. I uh, got some GDP numbers out there this morning. We'll jump into it. You got some Micron earnings last night. We'll jump into that as well. But nonetheless, markets slightly in the green this morning as we get the S&Ps up by three. NASDAQ 100 up by seven. But you see the little bit of a sell off from 15,200. You got the Dow right now up by 32 points. But there's your sell off as well. 13,143. And you got the Russell. Yeah, Russell trading higher. We got some bank stress tests. Maybe that's helping some of the banks out there. We got crude sitting just under $70. Quite the volatility yesterday. Crude charges higher. We were just above 70 for a moment. We're trading at 69.69 on the price of the crude contract. Gold right now trading lower as we have the dollar spiking higher on some of that news. We got the dollar, uh, excuse me, we'll get the gold contract down $16 at 1905. Tell you folks, if you haven't checked out my dad's gold report, weekly report, he's been out there doing it for 1105 weeks, 1105 weeks, right? I think that was the issue this week. Uh, issue 1105. Pretty remarkable. Uh, he's been making some great calls, looking for a little bit of a pullback for gold, uh, keeping his powder dry as gold's pulled back from 2085 to 1905 there in that gold contract. And it just keeps going. Now, jump over to the dollar index. We got a little bit of a spike today. Continue what we had yesterday, and there you go, man. How about it, right? Look at this. This is going to be a dicey action day, folks. Pay attention because, boy, uh, we got some GDP numbers. We'll get over to them in a moment. And is good news bad news again? It might be the case, man, that good news might be bad news again. We will see. But quite a spike in the dollar index. You jump over to the yields. Not surprising. Lower price, higher yield coming at you. You just had the 10-year, folks, drop. 20 ticks okay we get the dollar spiking we got yield higher you're talking about a yield right now of the 10 year of 3.83 percent 3.83 percent quite an attractive risk-free rate of return for a 10-year treasury right now on the 10 year and let's jump over to the headline so the headline first quarter economic growth actually two percent up from 1.3% first reported in a major GDP revision. Uh, yeah, you talk about it. So GDP increased at a 2% annualized pace for the January through March period, up from the previous estimate of 1.3 and ahead of the 1.4% number. Third and final estimate for Q1, the growth rate was 2.6 in the fourth quarter. Just don't see how we crush inflation with these types of numbers, man. You take the totality. OK, and the Fed's talking about taking the totality of everything, right? The Fed's talking about taking the totality of the interest rate hikes that they've come with and how they're impacting things, et cetera. Um, but boy, you take a look at it, man. Those are some strong GDP numbers as we are dealing with generational inflation. I'm not sure that we can crush inflation when we got unemployment under 4 percent and we got the GDP rising at 2 percent, man. Consumer spending rose 4.2 percent, the highest quarterly pace since the second quarter of 2021. At the same time, exports rose almost 8% after falling 3.7% in the fourth quarter. Uh, also, some good news on the inflation front is what they say here. Core PCE prices, which exclude food and energy, rose 4.9% in the period. Okay, A downward revision of 0.1 percentage point. Um, I mean, is, is, is that our good news on inflation, folks? Right? Keep things in context here. We just had the GDP go from 1.3 to 2, okay? And meanwhile, we got core PCE 
rising at 4.9 percent. It's almost a 5 percent number. I know we know it, but it's got to be stated, man. Uh, the Fed is insistent that they're going to 2 percent. We're at 5 percent. We got the GDP rocking at 2 percent right now. And we got unemployment at under 4 percent. And I don't know, man. I'd be careful in this market because it seems like things keep lining up that maybe we do get a July hike. I was talking about that potentially – there's not enough data to come before that July meeting, which is now, I think it's four weeks from yesterday. Let's see. Let's pull up the calendar. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think it's July 25th and 26th. Let's see it right here. July 25th and 26th. So we're less than four weeks away from the next Fed meeting right now. We're sitting at pretty lofty prices at 44.16 in the S&Ps. And meanwhile... We're getting core PCE numbers at around 5%. We're getting the GDP still showing no signs of showing down, man. We're getting revisions from 1.3 to 2%. Pretty remarkable in that accord, how that goes. Uh, yeah, and the market reacting so as we trade down about 20 bucks, uh, excuse me, 20 points in the S&Ps. But I would pay attention to the dollar index, man, because, boy, these are some moves going on right now in the dollar index, folks. And it's not stopping. Look at this run. Up to 103.37 in the dollar right now, continuing to climb. We got markets continuing to drop. We got 16 minutes, 17 minutes until the opening bell. We go back to the 10-year right now, continuing to drop like a rock, man. Let's put it on a one minute to see the action that we're getting. Yeah, we're still just making lows right now in the 10-year. You were trading at 112.30. We just traded down 22 basis points on the 10-year. Folks, we're not living in normal times. These moves in bonds are mammoth in any other record. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks after the break. Uh, people used to seek calmness. They used to seek safety in notes and bonds. And boy, you're getting some volatility these days as the economic numbers come in. We got GDP. We got some PCE numbers in there. And yeah, we got markets rocking. And we'll see. The day is young, as we say. Apple trades a bit lower. Man, Apple, it was creeping towards, creeping towards that $3 trillion mark. What are we at right now? 2.974. Look at that, man. 2.974. Uh, and that's at about 189. 15.7 billion shares outstanding. We only need 26. So you're talking about about a buck and a half. So you got to get to about 190.50, somewhere in that range, man. Seems like Apple might want to ring that bell. Not sure today's going to be the day if we get that pullback, though. Microsoft shares slightly lower. Back to the chart. Only to where we were at the close of yesterday, 334.87 from Microsoft shares. We jump over to Tesla, some of the fan favorites, Tesla shares. Tesla in the positive by a couple dollars, up to 258 from 256 for Tesla shares. We jump over to Meta, Facebook, off a bit to 284 from 285. And let's jump to Micron. So strong numbers from Micron last night. Yeah, it was interesting, man. If you were watching the market, folks, let's back it up to a one minute. If you were watching the market yesterday, right? I'm zooming in just on the close yesterday. Because check it out, man. That is the 359 bar. The S&Ps spiked, what, 10 points almost in the final 60 seconds of trading ahead of those Micron numbers coming out, which were good numbers. You jump over to Micron shares, MU. They didn't spike till after, right? So interesting how that happened. Did somebody know? Maybe somebody knew. We're talking about in the den. It's possible because if you were watching that market at the end of my dad's show yesterday, man, it was a rocket ship. Traded up 15 points in the final two to three minutes of the day. Stay tuned, folks. Should be an interesting day in the markets. We got the open in 15 minutes. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hicks, TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps in negative territory off by two points. We got a little bit of sell-off on some of the economic data this morning. To talk about some of it, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV from the TD Ameritrade Network Fast Market with your host Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. Every day, folks, 12 o'clock right here on Tiger TV. Check it out. Let's jump right into it. Kevin Hicks. What do you think of the action this morning, man? We got some moves in the dollar with yields, markets, some pretty interesting GDP numbers and job numbers out there on a Thursday coming into summer trading. Yeah, overnight markets strong, Tommy, based on pretty good news out of uh, the bank stress test. A um, little better earnings out of Micron than, than expected or less losses, I guess, in the case of Micron. But then, Tommy... We get to 7.30 Chicago time, 8.30 Eastern. We get a GDP number. Frankly, remember, this is the third look at first quarter GDP. And it gets revised up 50%, basically. That's unprecedented that they're doing that. It goes from 1.3% to 2% on GDP. Personal consumption goes from 3.8% to 4.2%. That's a strong number. And you see the reaction in yields and bonds notes when that happened and so then we get jobless claims you know back down below 240,000 at 239 and we've got an economy tommy remember the market can handle higher yields what the market doesn't like is spiking yields and some of the early le leaders in financials some of the early leaders like micron and chips might be that you know this could be a day where failed rallies might be the uh, tone of the day, Tommy. You got to be careful here because Tom White and I talked about this on yesterday's Fast Market Show. What can stop this market? And the answer is higher yields. And you're seeing that this morning. I was listening to some of your program yesterday. And yeah, pretty interesting. So you had Chairman Powell out there talking as well. Um, Sounded pretty hawkish that maybe we're coming with two more hikes. But of course, we got a full month basically to go until the next. Fed meeting, we were going to get the data we get this morning. We get some more data, of course, as we come into July for June. Uh, but yeah, you talked about where I was going to go to, man, talking about the dollar index with a huge spike, yields with a huge spike. Uh, I made reference to you in my first segment, Kevin, as you often say, you used to 
seek um, some calmness in the note in the bond market, right? In fixed income. Yeah. And boy, we got some volatility, man. These moves just absolutely, man. But that 10-year just dropped 20 plus ticks, I think. We're trading right now 112.11. Are we back to Kevin where good news is bad news? We are at least this morning, I guess. But is that is 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 that the focus you think as we go forward, as we come into, you know, we're coming into July 4th holiday. But when we come back, we're going to start getting non-farm payrolls, right? We get wages in there. Is that going to be a number where this market, what do you think about as we fast forward past the weekend, Kevin? I know we have, you know, a lot before then, but my head's trying to go to, it seems like we're back to where, man, these are some really strong numbers. You, you referenced the jobless claims and the market's a little freaked out that the numbers are so strong, I think, right now. What do you think? Well, Tommy, I think the market has been uh, consuming and digesting some, you know, some firm to stronger economic data. And it's been doing a good job of, of, of withstanding that. But this, uh, these, you know, because, and that's because yields had been calm and rates had been calm. If they start spiking, currently you've got a 10-year yield that, that, you know, up over 3.8, almost 3.82 right now. And so, Remember, the market doesn't like spiking yields. You know, slightly higher, dr grinding higher yields the market can w absorb. But higher dollar, higher yields, or sharply higher yields this morning are going to work against stocks. market may still end up on the day. The market may shrug it off. But at least right now, there's some serious headwinds for this market. And it is pretty interesting because we got a little sell-off going on in the S&Ps to the tune of about 20 points or so. But basically, we're flat from the close yesterday, and we're sitting at a price point of 44.15. So all things considered, um, relatively decent high prices in the markets with everything that we just talked about. With that in mind, Kevin, we're coming into the end of earnings season. You guys got some equities that you'll be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? We're going to cover Constellation Brands with what Lake Folio. They've got earnings tomorrow. And remember, they now currently have the number one selling beer in the United States with Modelo taking over for Bud Light. So we'll cover Constellation Brands. We'll also look at NVIDIA and AMD. We, you know, it's, nice. it's important this time where we are in the calendar and what's going on in, in, in stocks to cover the chip stocks and 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 the ai stock as much as we can give our viewers as much information as possible uh making decisions on these names so nvidia amd and like folio do presentation on constellation brands yeah nvidia there's no other chart right now there's plenty of charts maybe there are but boy that chart is something else man from 100 to 411 bucks and you said it man constellation uh Boy, you know, you get into the politics, you get into everything, but it is pretty remarkable that, that the the um, market share for Bud Light, right, versus Modelo, man, and Modelo crushing it on Constellation. Uh, pretty interesting to see where that goes. When you think about, I mean, can you give us a teaser, Kevin, made for Constellation? Because we're at 246 right now. I got the chart up here on the Thinkorswim platform. We were up to 261 last year, but behaving pretty well. And, and it's remarkable when you think about I mean, beer, right? Light beer, especially. Uh, and listen, I'm, I, I'm a Bud Light fan. I worked for Bud Light, Kevin, in college in Villanova. Worked for a distributorship right outside of Philadelphia. Was very fortunate to have that job. I got to go to the All-Star game in Philadelphia. I think that was the final game Michael Jordan played in. Talk about a cool way to get paid when you're working in college. But you think back, Kevin, 20 plus years ago, Bud Light, right? And, and small errors, and you have a market shift that's like multiple percentages. And beer especially is something that's, it seems like all light beers might taste the same, and it's just our mind thinking about the differences. And so, how do you make that? It's just interesting. What do you think about Constellation at 246 right now? Um, and they got a ton of other brands, but yeah, they got the biggest selling beer out there in America right now. Pretty interesting. Yeah, they, they've got Modelo. They've also got Pacifico in terms of their brands. So they've got really two Corona, right? Only, yeah. Brands and yeah, like I said, and Corona. So yeah. they've got a, a portfolio that's also got wine, you know, if, yeah. if, if you like Rufino, they, they've got Rufino wines, totally. they've got uh, a, a wide portfolio of beverages that we'll talk about today and we'll look nice. at what their earnings expectations are. But, you know, nice. this isn't just a beer company by any stretch. 
It's pretty cool, folks. Check it out. Listen to the program at 12 o'clock because when I was first looking at this equity, Kevin, I couldn't believe actually the brands they have. Uh, I don't drink a ton of alcohol, folks, but a couple glasses of wine here and there, and I do like light beer. Uh, that's my beer of choice, whatever you feel about it. That's the deal, man. Uh, and yeah, Kim Crawford, Miomi, I think they got in there. A few stellar wine brands along with, like you mentioned, Corona and Modelo. Uh, best selling beer in America. Pretty wild, that whole story. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning, man, as markets are moving. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, and we don't talk to you tomorrow, man. Uh, so have a great 4th of July, and, and stay safe, and we look forward to talking to you next week, man. Have a great holiday weekend, Tommy. You too, Kevin. Folks, check it out. They'll be talking about Constellation Brands today. Yeah, and how about uh, NVIDIA too, right? Boy, you talk about it, man. That chart is something else, man. And NVIDIA, you can't hold NVIDIA down. It's up by $3 today as we got markets trailing off right now with the S&P negative by 5 NASDAQ negative by 23 right now. That's the NASDAQ 100 and the Dow off by 24. And yeah, we'll finish off this segment as we jump to some of the banks. There was the run. You had them all passed. The 23 biggest banks, I think it was, passed the test for a severe recession. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the program. But you see JP Morgan up a couple bucks. You go over to Bank of America, up uh, 50 cents from 28 to 28.56. You jump over to Wells Fargo, trading higher as well. All the banks higher. But guess what, man? Focus today, as Kevin said, it's going to be on yields. It's going to be on the dollar. And we're coming back for the open in three minutes, folks. Don't go away. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P negative by five as we kick off the trading day. We got the NASDAQ 100 negative by eight, the Dow off by 24, and we got the Russell in positive territory. And let's jump to those bank stress tests. Here we go. So the headline, the Federal Reserve says the 23 biggest banks weathered severe recession scenario in their stress test. So this is the news Kevin was talking about, right? It gets a bump to the banking sector overnight interesting when you look at how this plays out so first of all the scenario that they talk about here in terms of what they put them through okay this all comes from the 2008 financial crisis now the fed's annual stress test stress test dictates how much capital the industry can return to shareholders via buybacks and dividends in this year's exam the banks underwent a severe global recession with unemployment surging to 10 percent you had a 40 percent decline in commercial real estate values and a 38 percent drop in housing prices well you better believe that commercial real estate might be in trouble, folks, okay? 38% uh, drop in housing, that would be surprising to say the least. 10% of unemployment, boy, we got a lot of millions of people to go if we ever get to double-digit unemployment. Now, what's very interesting here is that you have $541 billion in projected losses for the group in total if this happens, okay? But all the banks were able to maintain capital levels while continuing to provide credit to the economy in the hypothetical recession. Losses varied, and guess where got hit the hardest? Credit cards, period, credit cards, okay? Who's, who's open to credit cards? Capital One. How much do they lose? 14.7% on their total loan losses is what Capital One in that scenario would lose. You look at a company like Charles Schwab, 1.3%, and they've been taking a lot of heat lately with their balance sheet, right? Withhold to maturity securities, et cetera. Now, Schwab owns TD Ameritrade, owns Thinkorswim. They are a sponsor, okay? But interesting, when you look at the divergence, credit cards were easily the most problematic loan product. Not surprising, man. We're coming into an area where even if we face a 40% hit in housing, imagine this, right? I wonder what, I wonder what the average equity in a house would be right now if we took a 40% hit in housing. It's still a lot of equity, man. A lot of people got a lot of equity in their houses right now with the run we've had in the last two to three years. So it's interesting to see how that plays out. But credit cards, man, that's a big one in the bank sector, especially, uh, yeah, to put it lightly. So you get an all clear sign. Goldman's credit card losses. Losses on loans made up 78% of the $541 billion. Not surprising, right? The rest coming from trading losses is what they would figure in there. And yeah, they talk about 1.3% of Schwab, 14.7% of Capital One. Credit cards, easily the most problematic. The average loss rate for cards in the group was 17.4%. The next worst average loss rate was commercial real estate loans at 8.8%. Uh, among lenders, Goldman Sachs posted a nearly 25% loss rate in a hypothetical downturn, the highest for any single loan category across the 23 banks, followed by Capital One's 22% rate. The group saw regional banks, their capital levels drop from 12.4 to 10.1 during that hypothetical. And you have some of the regional banks, including U.S. Bank, Truist Citizens, M&T, and Capital One, lowest stress capital levels in the exam, hovering between 6 and 8%. It's interesting information, man. If you're, if you're forecasting some serious pain in the economy, okay, pay attention to what's going on because the feds run a hypothetical for you. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. But if your market bias is that's where we're going in the market, right, then, yeah, you want to know what card, what banks are going to get hit the hardest. And you're talking about 6 to 8% capital numbers on some of those regional banks. Still above current standards, relatively low levels could be a factor if coming regulation forces the industry to hold higher levels of capital. And guess what? Take the word out. It should be when coming regulation when because it's coming folks yeah it's coming to say the least big banks generally perform better than regional and card centric firms shouldn't be surprising right the biggest banks are the most well capitalized uh and the ones that have a lot of credit card debt if we hit 10 percent unemployment are going to be in more trouble than the others yeah and so now what happens is the banks are expected to disclose updated plans for buybacks and dividends friday after the close of regular trading yeah, so they're going to come out, they're going to talk about what they're going to get back now that they can, now that they've gone through that hypothetical, and we'll see where we go from there. Markets, 
We catch a little bit of a bid with the S&Ps, now flat. We pop on the open about seven points. We're trading at 44.18 right now at NASDAQ 100 in the positive. We got green across the board, folks. Let's check in on that dollar index, see how we're moving. Yeah, no reprieve from the dollar, man. No pullback there. We got we got a little bit of a reprieve from the market, but yields and dollar not moving at all. And as Kevin said, what are we sitting at right now? I think we're sitting just at above 3.8%. Yeah, 3.825. So that's a rounded up, man, to 3.83. 3.83%. The yield on the 10 year. Remarkable. Let's look at the curve for a second. Let me pull this up. Let's see where we are across the curve. And you know what? After this break, I'm going to turn, I'm going to pull up uh, CD rates as well. Because CD rates are well above this, and they're going to stay that way for some considerable period of time. Yeah, you got a two year at almost 5% right now, and you got the 10 year at about 3.83% right now. Look at this. The one year is at 5.4, man. The two years at 4.9, we'll call it. And the 10 year is at 3.8. That's the inversion, man. We'll see where we go from there. Hopefully, we don't get anything like that Fed stress test, man. 10% unemployment after we're used to dealing with 3.7, 3.8% unemployment. You ever get those types of residential real estate pullbacks, commercial real estate pullbacks? Boy, um, but they're supposed to plan for the worst, and the banks can handle it. And thank goodness they got those regulations in there, folks, because we see, even with regulation, the foolish greed that plays out constantly and so everybody likes to say regulation is bad because it hurts jobs it's the easiest statement in the world that means nothing without context okay everybody thinks that over regulation is bad if it hurts jobs and doesn't help if somebody doesn't think that then they're not thinking reasonably okay you don't want too much regulation but you need some folks in certain sectors like, for instance, sectors that we as a public are not willing to let fail. Do you understand? That's the crucial part of a capitalist economy, okay? In a capitalist economy, if you're not going to let certain companies fail, then you need to regulate them. That's it. Because otherwise, it's not really a capitalist economy when, what's the saying, right? Privatize the profits, socialize the losses. And in fairness, we can't let the banking sector collapse. We can't let the airline industry collapse. They should be much more heavily regulated as well because we can't let them collapse. They can't operate in a capitalist society where we just say the bad actors need to get punished for their economic decisions and we'll let them fail. So the banks in the same way, remember that. I mean, it's a remarkable that the day before the collapse of the regional banks began back in March, the day before Chairman Powell was in front of Congress answering questions from members on both sides of the aisle talking about making sure that they weren't going to bring the hammer down with regulations on regional banks because they were so important to local businesses. So you had all these politicians asking the chairman, and the very next day, you got regional banks that have $250 billion of deposits going BK because they don't have any money. So remember how it goes. It's very, the human mind forgets very quickly. Um, so remember those things. Regulations, okay. The banks, thank goodness they go through these stress tests because they'll probably be okay. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, folks. It will happen again. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever it be. Stay tuned. Tiger we got a lot to talk about. We'll come back. We'll take a look at Micron. Annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait. This sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's up by five right now. Nasdaq 100 back in the red. You got the Dow up by 100 points as it charges higher on some of those bank earnings. Let's check in on some of those banks, man. Whoo! The market loves those bank numbers, man. Look at that open for J P Morgan. Boom! You're up by three percent. You get a pop on the open for J P Morgan. Bank of America shares this morning. There's a pop for you, man. That's the Dow up 100 points for you. J P uh, Bank of America up by three percent as well. Wells Fargo up by three percent. Citibank up by one percent. This morning, you jump over to Micron with their numbers last night. You talk about it, man. How about it, right? Kevin was talking about it, man. Failed rallies. Watch out in this market, man. Look at that give up by Micron. Whoo wee. You just lost about 10%, man. If you bought the highs this morning, you bought the spike high on their earnings last night. Boom. Just like that, you give it up. Couple headlines from Micron here. Strong forecast in a sign that the glut is easing, but a probe in China remains a significant headwind. Okay, shares gain in late trading. Well, you got to update that, and then they tank on the open. Sales will be as much as 4.1 billion in the fourth quarter. The market was looking for about 3.87. Okay, uh, the industry glut is easing, even as chipmaker continues to face challenges in China. We believe that the memory industry has passed its trough in revenue, and we expect margins to improve as industry supply demand balance is gradually restored. That's the CEO said in a statement. Here's the kicker. But recent action in China, where the government has decided that Micron products are a security risk, is a significant headwind that is impacting our outlook and slowing our recovery. Now, let's see what time this article is at. That one's right after the close yesterday, okay? They updated it this morning at 547 in the morning. This article is out... A while back in June, okay, yeah, about two weeks ago, but check out the numbers. Half of sales tied to China HQ clients at risk. Beijing, ba Beijing barred Micron's ships from critical infrastructure. Micron's customers are being contacted by Chinese officials. Half of sales tied to China HQ. So that is going to be a persistent headwind, I imagine, man. 
uh, as that continues to press forward. But you see how things quickly change, right? As in, that's two weeks ago. They're talking about it. But, boy, they talked about it in their call, man. Uh, continuing in terms of significant headwind that is impacting our outlook and slowing recovery. Be careful, man. That is some strong wording from a company that's in the the um, crosshairs of China. Yeah. So Micron's chips, they help store and handle information, particularly vulnerable to swings in demand because memory products are directly interchangeable and traded like commodities. Yeah, so this is where, so check this out. So prior to the disrupt, disruptions caused by the pandemic, Micron's, Micron's management had argued that the spread of memory chips to more markets would help prevent another boom-bust cycle. And even now, the CEO and his team maintain that once this current set of unusual circumstances is over, the war in Europe and supply chain disruptions, the industry will return to long-term profitable growth. Be careful with these types of statements, okay? Because it, it almost reminds me of, and what's the statement, right, where you, life's happening right now, man, okay? Don't always plan for this perfect time in the future to live. Live now, folks, because there's always going to be stuff happening like what we have happening going on, okay? Um, this is not some dire situation that we're in that is causing extreme stress and problems. Okay. Yes, it's generational inflation. Yes, it's a generational pandemic. It's all the above. But we're four days removed from from a paid mercenary army marching within two hours of Moscow. Okay, where is that in this instance? Where is that? That's not going away, man. Okay. If they're waiting for the war in Europe to end, when's that end? That's not ending anytime soon, man. Okay. How long has this war been going on for? A year and a half already, and we just had a mercenary army charge into Moscow. So be careful when they say, yeah, things are tough right now, but when everything settles down, we'll be fine. Because everything might not settle down. There's always stuff happening, okay? There's always going to be geopolitical risks. What happens if when Russia calms down, we have China and Taiwan ratcheting up? Totally feasible. They're in the crosshairs of China. You don't think that's going to be a problem if China invades Taiwan, I'm not saying they will, but you better recognize those risks. And some of the wording coming out here saying that once this current set of unusual, maybe I w if the word transitory hasn't, hadn't become so polluted, he probably could have used the word transitory in this statement, right? Once this transitory set of, set of circumstances is over, uh, the industry will return to long-term profitable growth. So be careful out there, man. And the market... That is quite an open for Micron, man. You're off 4.2% right now. You got the NASDAQ trading lower. Let's jump over to Apple shares. There's an all-time high print for you, folks. 189.95, price to sell. Apple shares, 189.95 right there on the open. We're pushing those highs as we speak. Microsoft shares, down about four tenths percent. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares up by a percentage point right now. We jump over to some of those banks, see if they're holding those gains. Yeah, holding the well. You got JP Morgan up about 3% still. Bank of America up by 3%. Decent numbers as they pass their stress tests for sure. All right, what else we got talking about here? Well, we got to reference the jobless claims, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to them, even though they're, they they got a little bit of a headline in terms of uh, the lowest number since, I think, uh, fell by the most since October of 2021. I saw something about the lowest number since May or something like that. Nonetheless, you dipped 26,000 to 239,000. I had to pay attention to the four-week average on there. That's what I would do. I'd pay attention to the four-week average, which is the black line here on weekly jobless claims. You are ticking up. So we'll see where we go from there. But, boy, strong GDP numbers, man. Can't overstate the strength of those GDP numbers, to say the least. Yeah. Could talk a little Chairman Powell. All right. What else we got? Let's see. We got fourth quarter GDP. Ah, oh, this one's an interesting one. We talked about it. So Overstock, they bought the name rights for the digital assets for Bed Bath and Beyond for about 21.5 million and guess what that's their new name that's it they paid 21 million dollars to ditchoverstock.com they're going to become Bed Bath and Beyond that's their domain name in the coming weeks that's it they got a new name it's all going to be digital probably a good move probably a good move 20 million bucks is not that big of a deal overstock 
there's the rise for you, man. Look at that. Is that right? Yeah, up 15%. Is that right? Man, look at this. So was is this when they bought it last week, I think? Did you just gain 50% on this equity for spending $21 million? Is that what happened? Ooh, be careful if that's what happened, folks. All right. Um, let's jump over to the Analyze tab. All right, we're coming in the break. We got one more segment. Yeah, this is crazy, man. So you're worth $1.3 billion. They spent $21 million bucks for Bed Bath & Beyond's digital assets. Probably a smart move, man. Um, but is it a smart move that should increase the value of that company by 50% in the period of a week or two? I don't know about that one. Yeah. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. S&P's up by three. NASDAQ 100 negative by 21. I got a chart of Virgin Galactic up here. They're going to be bringing, I guess today's the day that they're going to be bringing uh, the first travelers up here. Yeah, Richard Branson's space flight. Uh, Virgin Galactic set to launch his first commercial, commercial space flight later today. Now, this guy is the ultimate promoter, man. I'm just going to remind you some context here, folks. This is the chart of a daily chart of Virgin Galactic. OK, this is when they first started flying the plane into space. Remember, 62 bucks. Remember when that 
acceleration. The race was on between him, between Bezos. Uh, be careful, okay? You had Chamath in there. I was just Googling. He was a big investor in this SPAC, right? He dumped all of his shares in March of 2021. March of 2021. You want to see where the stock was? Right about here. 32, 35 bucks. We're trading at five bucks right now, folks. That's where the insiders got out. So be careful in this equity because what just happened is you just got the same thing. You just got an acceleration up to six bucks. Boom. You're out six bucks. Boom. You're back to $4.60. So be careful. And what do we got, folks? We got our Tiger Dollar sale going on at TFNN, folks. It runs through Friday, July 7th. So it runs this weekend and ends next Friday, a week from tomorrow, basically. July 4th sale. We only do two of these a year, folks. We usually do one on July 4th, around the middle of the year. We usually do a holiday sale towards the end of the year. You can get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Okay, any of you current subscribers out there right now to any TFN newsletter, please come check out the sale. You can either purchase it in a $500, $1,000, or $1,500 option. You either get a 20 30 or a 40% bonus on the high end, up to a $600 Tiger Dollar bonus on the high end. Tiger Dollars never expire. They're used automatically. So if you're on a monthly subscription, you buy your Tiger Dollars, apply it to your account once, and every month they automatically get used going forward. Uh, this sale ends Friday. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. And we'll be sending everyone a Tiger Mug. I'm going to get my Tiger Mug in here today. Don't have it in here today. I usually do as I'm taking sipping some coffee out of that Tiger Mug. All right, folks. Thanks so much for starting your trading day off with me. We got Basil Chapman up next. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning before the long weekend. And yeah, as our man Bowser would say, the day is young, folks. Markets in positive territory, a little bit of a sell-off as we speak. Stay tuned for Basil. He's coming up next. Have a great Thursday, everybody.